Welcome to Monet Cafe and to my patrons on my Patreon page. I'm sharing this video in two formats to both groups. I hope you enjoy this very interesting new way to paint with pastel. Some people may have tried this before, but I'd never done it this way before. I'm literally using the pastels almost like little watercolor palettes. But first, let me give you a little tour of my backyard for my subject matter. I recently did a video, which I will share with you guys, on the Fibonacci sequence, also called the Golden Ratio, and how all of nature uh, permeates this beautiful order sequence and design and when we learn these things it only helps our art get better so please be sure to see that video and now just enjoy this simple little tour in my backyard while I talk to you guys a little bit I wanted to make sure I often don't say please subscribe like this video and share comments it really does help my standing with YouTube and also I'm gonna be asking some questions during the video so I hope you guys will answer that's how this channel gets better is because of you. You guys have shared with me that you like my recent format of laying my paintings out flat so you guys can see better and see my supplies. I will be giving a full supply list in this video, so I want you to join in on the fun. Monet Cafe will get a version that's a little bit shorter. My patrons will get the full version, and they will also, this is part of their homework assignment. So this video has a lot of content, but I think it should be very easy to follow. I think I missed my calling as a nature photographer. Has anyone ever done this with a little bloom? These are crepe myrtles in my backyard. Wee! <laughs> All right, let's get started. Okay, here we go with the supplies. You basically need a piece of watercolor paper. I have one of these watercolor blocks. It's made by Canson. Uh, it's the Arches block. And I love this because the edges are already kind of glued around the edges and it, it keeps the paper from buckling a little. But I also like the real textured surface here. Now you could just use any kind of watercolor paper. I thought I'd show you my little watercolor um, tablet here or pad where I have used it to actually do pastel paintings. Yes, you can do pastel paintings on watercolor. I did not coat any of these with clear gesso that I often talk about to make a surface for pastel. These were were literally just done with mostly new pastels made by Prismacolor. They're harder pastels and they can work on watercolor just fine. So I find this kind of a fun and neat little way to sketch. I don't even put any glassine or tracing paper in between them. Probably would be a good idea to do that, but I find if they just, you know, touch the other paper, they still look pretty much like they did when I painted them. Oh, that's my little Oreo in the backyard. I love her. She's my heart. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, you can use uh, watercolor paper with pastels. And now in this video, I'll share how you can use pastels to paint on watercolor paper. So some, this is just a charcoal sketch. Some of these things are just really experimentation and that's what Monet Cafe is all about, having fun. These are just some little color studies I did of a little waterway with some trees. And we wanna experiment, we wanna have fun, and then often we discover new ways to do things. What I am going to share with you today, using pastels like watercolor, I will definitely use again. I absolutely had a blast doing this. And I want to share as well that you don't have to use watercolor paper. If you use any pastel paper that's water friendly, such as the UART paper I just showed, and also pastel matte paper is also water friendly. And the white surface, the pastel matte white, works great with regular watercolor. So I'm sure it would work great with this technique as well. In this lesson, I used primarily the Derwent Ink Tense Blocks. These are great for doing underpaintings, uh, and they are, uh, Ink Tense is the name because they're intense with color, and that's one of the reasons that I thought this would be a great type of pastel for using this technique, and indeed it was. Regular soft pastels, I haven't really done much of that with this watercolor technique, uh, but these are literally almost like a little watercolor palette. Watercolors and pastels are really the same thing, just um, combined differently and in a little bit of a different format. So I also recommend using Neocolor wax pastels for this technique. You can literally pick these up and just paint with them with a brush and, and use them like watercolors, just like the ink tense blocks. So I'll be using a combination of both of these. I didn't use any regular soft pastels for this example. 
Now, you could also do the same thing with new pastels, harder new pastels. They work well. They're not quite as intense and bold in color as the ink tense blocks. You can kind of tell it from looking at the video. Those are really bright and bold with color, color and they're a lot of fun. And also keep in mind you can use regular watercolor in conjunction with the pastels uh, because they are both made of similar substances. They work great together and uh, the goal is just to have fun, have some uh, painting freedom time and don't keep yourself so much in a box that you can't play. And now um, of course you're going to need some brushes. I have a pretty uh, decent set of some brushes that I like but you can use whatever you have. I use a lot of cheap brushes as well. Now this next little section is Patreon only content. They got the full version of this and I'm not going to make you guys watch this in real time the whole time. So I'm going to speed this up and just describe kind of what we did in our Patreon group. We've been working with the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio. So I had my patrons for their homework. They have homework over the weekends, which is fun homework. It's not like tedious. You want to do it. It's fun. And then we share it all together in an album. But I had them go outside, explore nature, uh, find some things after watching the Fibonacci golden ratio video that I mentioned earlier. It's the video right before this one. And after exploring their world to bring some of the outdoors in or take some pictures of things and literally to paint something that you, you saw or you had in your life or in your backyard. And then I had them, I showed them how to create a graph um, and make a Fibonacci spiral. And I wanted the spiral to be part of the painting, the golden ratio. Uh, it's a way you you draw out the blocks in the same sequence and the same measurements as the Fibonacci code or or sequence um, and it was a lot of fun but you don't have to do this for this lesson let's just get to the actual painting I just wanted to describe that in case you're like what is that spiral in the background of the painting okay let's get to painting and we will be using pastels like watercolor paints and here are some of the other flowers I collected from my backyard and I literally just laid them around my work surface area as inspiration to paint. I didn't work from a reference photo. I worked from real live models, my little flowers. So you can see how I laid the sunflower over to the right there. And uh, once again, I'm just using a brush with water, just like I would watercolor and using my little ink tents palette there, just like a watercolor palette tray. Uh, once again, if I haven't shared this already, those little wells work out perfectly. You see those little empty spaces there to mix water and pastels together, just like you would with a little watercolor palette where they have the little areas where you can um, kind of pre-mix some of your watercolors. You'll see me doing that later. You can kind of see on that palette where I did it up to the top there. Now, when I start out, I, like I said, I have never done it this way before. I started just applying the water literally like a watercolor palette. Later, you'll see me actually lift the pastel up. I kind of angle it so that water doesn't drip down all beside it and um, and make the pastel kind of get underneath it and everything. So it was just more of an efficient way to kind of prop the pastels up as I worked on them. It's real easy though. Um, now I really love this Arches paper. It's a uh, it's a block of pa of watercolor paper that is literally glued around the edges and it kind of keeps your, your surface flat. You know how watercolor paper buckles? Now, if you add a lot of water, it still will buckle some, but uh, it definitely helps. And um, I like that it's pretty heavily textured. It's Canson Arches uh, pa uh, watercolor paper block. And I, I like the texture because if you don't have your brush overly saturated with water, I mean, you definitely want to use enough water. That's one thing I've learned is water is your friend with watercolor painting. Um, if you don't add too much water, you can get kind of that uh, painterly look where it kind of skips over certain areas and uh, just keeps that kind of textural grainy look to it. I like that actually. Um, I end up kind of covering that up anyway, but um, I was having fun here and that's my encouragement to you with this lesson. We're always trying to learn and explore new techniques and if we get so serious about everything, um, it takes the learning away and it takes the fun away too, you know. Um, that's an example with this yellow one, how I was a little heavy handed with the water and I started to see how it was 
um, kind of deteriorating the pastel and letting it drip down underneath it. So that's why later you'll see me lift them up like I described. But I'm going to share with you, I'm mixing a little bit of that uh, yellow and a little bit of the orange together. And I'm using my watercolor palette next to me. You can barely see it to the left there. I'm using that before I realized I could use those little wells there in the Derwent thing to actually pre-mix colors in the same ink tints little palette there. So uh, now I'm going to show you how I approach painting these sunflower petals with the pastels as watercolor. All right, here we go. I'm gonna zoom in and show you this a little better. What I do is I come out just kind of thin from the flower and then I press the brush to get a thicker petal. I like to keep a little bit of air in there next to the center part of the flower because otherwise your flowers end up looking all smushed together and later you can go in and add some of those petals that are behind that one I smushed a little too fast but I I noticed that that one was kind of smushed together when I looked over where the sunflower was laying down so but just keep in mind that sometimes it's good to leave a little space keep a little thin line and I am I'm looking at the sunflower how it's laying down so I'm kind of trying to recreate that one but see how I flatten the brush to get the petals wider all right I'm gonna speed this up a little bit now so you can um, you get the idea now notice that I get my general um, petals in and then after I get all the way around and once again I'm trying I'm trying to avoid monotony or everything every, th every um, petal being the same or the same distance apart so I'm turning them this way and that way but after I get that first kind of layer in the forefront of petals I go in see how I'm doing that and kind of add little hints of kind of a secondary layer behind it now I'm just grabbing some the the paper's pretty wet like I said don't be afraid to use a decent amount of water when you're using watercolor especially if you've got a good watercolor paper um, because it really does lend towards that painterly effect and also keep in mind that watercolor, I mean, I am keep saying watercolor even though I'm working with pastel because it's going to behave very much like watercolor. Um, you're not going to be able to get the lights back again. You want to preserve the luminosity. So if you want those petals to look light and airy like they do now, you don't want to get too thick with your paint. Now I know that the center is dark typically the sunflower centers are pretty dark i like the fact that they sometimes have a little bit of red in them or i find that it looks neat a little red and purple in there with some of the dark and maybe a little hint of orange in there it definitely gives them more interest rather than just making a black center like so many people do um, so i'm gradually going to just keep working this up see you can even hold the pastel like i'm doing right now um, getting it a little darker also keep in mind that watercolor Again, we're using pastel like watercolor. It dries lighter typically. So it's a balance for sure. You want to make sure you don't get too dark too quickly, but it also will dry a little lighter than you're thinking. So now I do go in and add more of that orange. I got that little liner brush. You see how thin that brush is? It's a type of brush that's really good for doing little vines or little um, um, the veins that are kind of in the flowers. So I added a few of them and I was just playing. Okay, this was not even supposed to be anything serious. I thought it would be fun to try to recreate the Fibonacci spiral and do a painting over it. And uh, again, it was a great lesson or I hope it's a great lesson for my patrons. So, and I thought the Monet Cafe, Cafe channel would really love this part, which is about using pastels to paint like watercolor. So I'm just giving the flower a little more depth, a little more vibrancy with color and having fun. Red's a, a really fun or, or a really orangey kind of a red is a fun color to add um, to sunflowers instead of just the typical yellow and brown, you know, um, it gives it, um, just, I don't know, a little more pizzazz. See how I've started to lift my pastels up out of their uh, tray? Um, the ones yellow down there, you can see like the third yellow one up. I had added so much water that it started kind of getting into mud. So that's why I decided to kind of start lifting them up. And that really did work well. And I, and I started to be more careful about how much water I added. Now, you can see here where I used the little Derwent Ink Tense box, those little wells. 
I used them just like a little watercolor well that you would use. I liked this color um, because it's not it's a it's a cooler green, and I noticed the sunflower leaves um, were they were warm out in the sunshine, but they they weren't just so vibrant green when I brought them inside. And I really liked that coolness that they had. I add a little warmth to it later, but. Um, but I'm just, like I said, I'm just playing, having fun. And again, I'm kind of using that brush. Sometimes I let it purposely skip along that textured surface because it adds that, that artistic painterly feel. Um, and I kind of, I, I kept playing with this, you'll see as the painting progresses. Uh, I just, I didn't want to quit, <laughs> but um, there's a point I'll, I'll share when I get to it that I'm like, man, I kind of wish I'd have just left it the single sunflower with the Fibonacci spiral. I, I'm thinking I still might go ahead and uh, use my, I'm going to show you an interesting little marker when we're done too that works so well with watercolor on watercolor paper. Um, uh, you you got to watch to the end to see it, okay? So there's a little teaser to keep you guys watching. <laughs> it does help my YouTube channel when you guys watch all the way through. Um, but anyway, so um, I ended up doing more, um, more flowers and more background. Um, here's where I'm using a little bit of a darker, almost a brownish green to give the impression of, I had the sunflower literally laying down the the stalk of it is going up to the upper um, right hand corner and this is where I was saying kind of wish I had just kept it like this like it was laying down I end up changing it in a minute to where it actually is more like it's growing on a stalk with other sunflowers so I don't regret any of it because I had a good old time you know and you're always learning the more that you do um, so I'm adding a little bit of variety in color and um, but again I like the simplicity of just the Fibonacci spiral with the sunflower um, but I want you guys to play and don't get so there's a little bit of warmer green that I'm adding um, don't get so oh just hard on yourself we can do that can't we artists I'm talking to myself too you know because <laughs> I do it too and don't compare yourself to art other artists learn from them but understand the people that you're probably emulating or, or recreating their work they've been doing this a whole lot longer than you have so um, that's where I'm using that little liner brush um, you know sunflowers have these little um, outer tendrils that come out sometimes from it so again here's where I kind of liked the simplicity of it but I decided to use I think this is where I decide to do a little bit of a oh not yet I still do a little bit on the sunflower but I end up doing a little bit of a purpley background and um, and I liked it but uh, I think I want to do this again and just do the single sunflower so all right guys you enjoy this I'm gonna let the process of this keep going you see what I'm doing now I do end up I've never done this before but I've always heard about watercolor artists using salt to give texture to give some interesting effects and I use some salt in the center of my sunflower um, but here's why I'm gonna start adding the purple I think yeah um, but I don't think it was wet enough, or it could be because I don't use regular iodized, iodized salt, is that what it's called? Um, like table salt, uh, it's really bad for you. Right here I'm applying water, you'll see that I, I end up adding the purple to it. This is a wet on wet technique, it's going to make it just really, really loose, okay? So I, I do kind of like the purple, it's kind of nice. But, um, but anyway, table salt is not good for you. I, I won't give you the whole scientific reasoning, but I just I use um, this salt called pink uh, Himalayan pink salt, um, and it's so much better for you. But I that's all I have, so I used it, and it didn't give the texture. It could have been because I didn't have it wet enough in the center, or it could have been because of what type of salt it was. So as you can see, uh, the purple, I really do like the purple as a kind of a complementary color to some of these oranges and yellows that are going on. So um, again, kind of liked this simplicity, maybe just the flower and a little bit of the purple. Um, I kind of liked that I got a little drip there, you see that? So I thought, I'm just gonna go with it. So I get some of that purple, I take my brush, put a little water on it, and I just hit the brush on my hand, and voila, you got a little fun, abstract kind of thing going on. Now this is the sunflower that I decided to kind of use um, and just keep playing and going with it. I literally just kind of traced around some of the leaves. I thought that might be fun. So uh, I don't stick totally with that composition there of the flower, but it was kind of a neat way to do it. So 
Play, play, play. Have fun. Paint like you're a kid again. Try this technique with the watercolor. I mean, with the past, I keep saying watercolor because it feels like you're using watercolor. Um, so uh, try it with uh, soft pastels. Do me a favor. Let me know if you try it. Let me know of your um, results. And if you're a patron, if you're in our Patreon group, of course, you're going to share. Uh, my patrons share in an exclusive group that I have. Oh, I do like that turquoise color that I added to. All right, maybe I am liking adding more. Um, my patrons have an exclusive Patreon group in Facebook. Um, and uh, if you become a patron, I share the group and everything with you so you can share your work. We also have in the Patreon group where... I have these albums where my patrons share their work in these albums, not in Facebook, because some people aren't on Facebook. And it's so cool because I get to see all of your work together in this neat album, and uh, it's really fun. And I give you guys points for your homework, which leads to a prize. Um, every month I'm giving a prize for art supplies. Uh, most likely, typically, it'll be Dick Blick, a gift card. Um, so every patron who participates in the homework assignments gets a chance, and the more you participate, the higher your chances are of winning the Dick Blick card each month. So it's just a lot of fun. So, you know, obviously my patrons are watching this, and they'll be doing their homework, which is cool. Now, if you're in Monet Cafe, and you're not a patron, and it's only $5 a month to become a patron, I really do appreciate those who pay. There's some people who who they don't even, you know, participate in a lot of the stuff. They just pay to help this channel because I'm, I'm bringing art lessons to people everywhere, which is really cool to me. So, you know, you can do it just to support this channel or you can do it to kind of participate and have fun with us. We're like a neat little art family. Um, so, but if you're just in Monet Cafe and your financial means aren't where you can support and or you're just too busy and you don't have time to support, you can and you pro many of you already have become members of the Monet Cafe art group on Facebook because that's the art group. We just hit over 10,000 members. One of the biggest pastel art groups in Facebook, on Facebook. Um, so, and it's loaded with people who will help you. Uh, we've got artists of every level, but what I love is the fact that it's it hasn't left lost its sweetness. Everybody is still so kind. Advanced artists will answer your question if you're just beginning. So it's just such a great resource for you guys um, to grow and learn as an artist. Now I, I am gonna. I told you I was gonna ask you guys some questions. I want to ask you guys now that I'm using pastels like watercolor. Watercolor is probably my second favorite medium to pastels, and you know, I named the channel Monet Cafe for a reason because I didn't want to totally isolate myself to only doing pastels. And I thought Monet Cafe was kind of like a neat place. You, you know, it's like a fun, free, loose, impressionistic place we can get together and learn art. I mean, I wish we could all just have coffee and paint together, but this is the online way that we do it. And I wanted the name to be broad enough to where I could introduce other mediums and mixed media. So... That leads me to my question. Let me know if you like me adding in every so often a little watercolor tutorial. I mean, even if I'm using just watercolors rather than mixed media with pastels. So um, are you guys okay with me not just doing pastels and introducing some other things here and there? Uh, let me know in the comments. Also, most likely I I know I'm not gonna veer totally away from pastels. I'll, that's that's my love, you know. But um, but I would like to get your feedback if you'd like to, you know, mix it up a bit sometimes. I think it would be fun. Uh, plus, I think exploring other mediums only uh, increases your. Uh, art skills, abilities, when you learn how different mediums behave, you might realize, hey, I, I like doing a little mixed media work. Mixed media, only meaning kind of what it sounds, you mix different mediums like pastel and acrylic and watercolor. I like acrylic painting too. So, um, so again, let me know. Okay, now I'm intensifying this first sunflower because it's going to be the star of the show. It's the one that's closest to us and the biggest. And um, the other ones I do add a little bit of fun, you know, uh, color to it. But I, the, the little one in the middle the, that's back in the back, you, as an artist, you have the ability to um, create detail where you want it. And it's usually a good idea to not make everything so detailed all over the whole painting. So uh, that's why that little guy is kind of subdued and in the background. 
Um, so anyway, getting close to done, and then I'll share with you a little bit about the markers that I used. If you're doing the Fibonacci sequence uh, combination with this painting, I'll tell you what I used to, to accomplish that. I love these markers. Well, I just realized it's almost at the marker section, so I'll just keep uh, talking. I did add a little bit of depth um, with some darker values. Um, this is where I said I kind of made that sunflower with the stalk. I probably made the stalk a little too wide. Um, but I, I wanted to get a little bit more of the darker values um, and also to ground it a little bit. You'll see how I add some of uh, a darker value down like where the, the roots would be or where those stalks are going down. I also didn't really, I wasn't liking that background to the upper right because that's when I had had the flower laying down. I decided to make it kind of like a sky rather than the leaves I would, had made before. That's the neat thing, you can change things up. What I did is I actually, after I was done, Again, with watercolor, you better preserve your light or you can't get it back. So because I had already made that sky in the upper right uh, dark, I literally just got some new pastels of a light blue and a, um, a white, and I lighten it up. So when you see the final here and it looks a little lighter in the sky up there, that's how I did it. Okay, some more purple. You know, if you've watched my channels, my, my videos much on my channel, you know I love purple. I'm doing a little bit more of the little splatter technique, just having some fun, getting creative on a Saturday, and it was awesome. All right, so here's where I was telling you I reinforced my Fibonacci spiral with these Posca markers. These markers are awesome for using on top of watercolor. Now, the cool thing is they have white as well as black. So I know that was a lot of information in one video, but I had a lot of fun with it. And I hope you learned something. I hope you will try using soft pastels like watercolor. Wasn't that neat? If you try it, let me know what you thought. Become a patron if you'd like, and happy painting.